Um, I would recommend that you take that worship program that's got it nicely printed on the front and you can put that in a prominent place where you'll see it often, maybe your refrigerator or your workspace, or make yourself a sticky note and put it on your dashboard or your mirror in your bathroom. Or make it the, the screen saver uh, on your computer or the, the home page on, on your smartphone. But put it somewhere where you're going to see it often enough to commit it to heart. Here's why. This is not just about being nice so that people will think well of you. And it's not even just about making the world a better place by adding some kindness into it. And it's not about not being a bad person. This is about the gospel. This is the gospel boiled down, the summary of it. The Good Samaritan parable is a how-to story. It shows us how to love God and love our neighbors. The summary is be kind. Be kind. The Good Samaritan story must have been a shocking one to its first audience because it shattered their views of who was godly and who was not. The priest and the Levite, they're not terrible people. They, they are God-fearing people. But they are more concerned about their own self-interests than they are with being kind to others. They are not ethically dead. They are not immoral or amoral. They are not totally void of human caring. But they are like us, and we are like them. I'm not talking about the Good Samaritan. I'm talking about the priest and the Levite. They got caught up in their own plans, in their own needs, in their preconceptions of other people, and they let those things keep them from showing a little bit of kindness to a neighbor in need. They are more concerned with what it will cost them to be kind than the impact that their little bit of kindness would have on somebody else. If you've got your Bible or your Bible app with you, uh, take a look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11. I've got it on the screen for you as well. This is a passage that's a favorite of mine. It's called the Christ Hymn, very often. It is a beautiful, poetic, confessional statement about who Jesus is. And it calls us, in the introduction to it, to be of the same mind as Christ Jesus. And then it describes him, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave and being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Kindness is the self-giving way of Christ. Kindness is who Jesus is. He is the very embodiment of God's kindness toward us. So the enemy of kindness is not meanness, but self-centeredness. Self-centeredness is the enemy of kindness. The guy who cuts you off in traffic and the woman who let the door swing in your face, well, they probably did not wake up in the morning and think to themselves, I'm going to go out into the world and be mean to people today. What they did probably when they woke up in the morning is be completely focused on where they need to be and what they need to do, what they've got to accomplish, and you are not part of their plans. Now, this makes it sound like people in church are not the ones who ever caught, cut off anybody in traffic or let doors swing and hit somebody in the face. So let's get uncomfortable for a minute and admit that sometimes it's us. 
Unfortunately, the waters of baptism do not erase our tendency toward narcissism. We are just as prone as anybody to focus on our own feelings and our own needs and to be oblivious to the people around us. I've been doing a lot of reading about kindness lately, and I'll put on our e-news in the next couple weeks and in our social media a book I've been reading. It's a little Catholic book full of wonderful stories about kindness, and in it I came across a graduation speech that novelist George Saunders gave at Syracuse University several years back. It's going to be on the screen for you, and I'll read you some lines from his graduation speech. Since, according to me, your life is going to be a gradual process of becoming kinder and more loving, hurry up. Speed it along. Start right now. There's confusion in each of us, a sickness, really, selfishness. But there's also a cure. So be a good and proactive and even somewhat desperate patient on your own behalf. Seek out the most efficacious anti-selfishness medicines energetically for the rest of your life. Saunders continues, and remember he's talking to people who are about to graduate from college. Do all the other things, the ambitious things, travel, get rich, famous, innovate, lead, fall in love, make and lose fortunes, swim naked in wild jungle rivers after having first tested for monkey poop. <laughs> it's a graduation speech. But as you do, to the extent that you can, err in the direction of kindness. Do those things that incline you toward the big questions and avoid the things that would reduce you and make you trivial. Philippians 2.5, the introductory sentence to the Christ hymn, in Mounce's translation says, your attitude toward one another should be the same as the attitude of Christ Jesus. And that attitude, that mind, is one of kindness. Like the Good Samaritan. Go and do likewise. Amen.